In last week's podcast, I was looking for an opportunity to take advantage of my belief that GameStop was going to go down as fast as it went up. What did I do? And how did I do? That's the focus of this week's video. Hey everyone, Tom here. So what originally got me looking at this, other than all the media attention, was three days last week. Let me put them up on the screen here for you. There's the day before. There's the day of the spike. And there's the day after that big spike that you see on the screen. I'm looking to the far right. The price had popped to 30 on Monday to 65 on Tuesday and then back to 40 on Wednesday. Wednesday was my day to strike a bearish trade. So I could have done three things in my mind. Number one, I could have shorted the stock. Now, Google defines shorting a stock as this, borrowing a security whose price you think is going to fall and then selling it on the open market. And then, of course, once you're ready to close the trade out, you buy the stock back, hopefully for a lower price, and you return that borrowed stock and you pocket the difference. Now, the problem with this is there's too much risk. It's also hard to borrow this stock, and the cost to borrow it are super crazy if you intend on hanging on to it for any length of time. So also buying puts might make a good strategy. It's a good idea for bearish opportunities, as puts give you the right but not the obligation to sell a stock at a certain strike price for a certain amount of time, and you pay a premium for this right. Now, the problem with buying puts is that GME puts last week, absolutely expensive off the chart. To give you a comparison, the VIX, which is the volatility index, this is for the S&P 500, was trading at around a 12 last week, where GME's volatility of the near money puts were trading at $750. That's right, over 60 times more than the VIX. That's like buying a Happy Meal at McDonald's for $750 when they're selling for 12 bucks at other McDonald's. Not very happy now, huh? So what I was looking for was a strategy that didn't require borrowing the stock and I didn't have to overpay for the option premium. So what I needed was a spread, but I wanted one with a decent probability that I was going to make money. Enter the bear call spread. So here's what I did. On May 15th, that was last Wednesday, I bought the May 17th 40 calls, and I sold the May 17th 35 calls on the same order ticket. Now, I got a dollar per call spread. That ends up being $100 per spread contract traded in my pocket. I call this a credit spread because when I opened the trade, the net result between what I sold, which were the 35s, and what I bought, which was the 40s, was a credit of a dollar that goes in my account. All right. Now, I hold that until it either expires worthless or I buy to close that spread. This is what it looks like on a risk graph. So I can see here, as you see here, the risk and reward are both limited. The risk is the difference between strike price minus what I took in. So there's five points between 40 and 35, and I took in a dollar, so I had four points risk. The reward was the dollar I took in. That's the most I can get on this trade. Now, what I'm looking for is basically for the stock to stay at or below 35 within the two days after I took the trade. You might wonder, why in the world would they take a dollar in and risk four? Because at the time I put this on, the trade was well below the 3540 strike prices that I took. All right. And again, my intent was that this trade would expire worthless, meaning it had to be at 35 or below, and both the 35 calls and the 40 calls would expire worthless. I keep the full credit of a dollar, and again, all I need to happen is for GME to be below 35 at the close of Friday. By the way, here's where we closed at the end of Wednesday, if you want to take a quick look at where I was. By the end of Wednesday, I was down $83 per contract, and that's because GME actually climbed from the time I put the trade on to the close of Wednesday. So I was down over 20% on this trade with two days to go. Let's fast forward to Thursday. Now things look a lot better. As you can see, both the 35 and 40 calls at the bottom of the screen, they've dropped in value. And my spread has dropped in value as well. If you remember, I was down $83 per contract. That was what I was losing. That flipped. By the time Thursday's close came around, I was already at a $62 per contract profit 
out of $100 per contract I could make total. There's still one day left to go. Let's take a look at what happened on Friday. So on Friday, this stock must have closed below 35 because now I have the full $100 because both the 40 call and the 35 call expire worthless. So what did GME stock do during this same time frame? Let's put it up on the board and see. Look what happened after the spike. All right, Wednesday, yeah, it was closing somewhere around 40. Thursday, it dropped into the 20s. And by Friday, we were around $22 a share, which was well below my max profit, which was going to be at $35 or less. So the takeaway here is that there's more than one way to skin a meme trader other than shorting the stock. Hope you got as much education out of this as I had fun out of teaching and trading in a live environment last week. I'll see you on the next one.